Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure, really, to uh, give a talk today about service modifications of uh, biomedical uh, devices. And first, I'd like really to thank Professor Abdesalam Mahlouf that uh, uh, gave me this opportunity to present. Uh, on behalf of him, we are collaborating for about seven years uh, up to now together, and we we done really lots lots of uh, fantastic output of, uh, of research. But he is very busy these days. He's moved uh, to another uh, uh, locations in USA that uh, he couldn't really provide the presentation. To, so today I want to really talk about the service modifications and uh, uh, of biomaterials. Uh, sales modification, actually the biomaterials, the first interactions comes uh, for biomaterials is first detecting the surface uh, of the implant or what is the medical device would be. And it's, so the immune systems, once it, detecting the surface properties would be keep the materials in the body or it's going to be rejected. So for sales modification, it plays a very important role. Uh, for success at the early stage, even of implantations. There are different uh, functions can be improved through the surface, uh, like surface charge, surface energy, uh, hydrophilicity. We can tune this as uh, a hydrophilicity uh, or hydrophobicity, depend on what type targeting of application or surface topography, changes from uh, nano to micro, and also the texture uh, characteristic we talk about nanotube, uh, plate structure, roads, and so on. All we change is the uh, uh, sensing of the cells itself, like mechanical transaction as well. So outlines today, I want to talk about cells modification of magnesium as really the one of the very uh, uh, established materials up to now for, uh, for bone and distinct applications. Then I will talk about cells modification of polymeric scaffold including nanofiber and 3D printed scaffold as well. Also the last, as I, my background currently is a dental uh, implant materials. So I wanna uh, discuss something very novel we have developed in, uh, in our group and I will share with you. So magnesium has been started by uh, early of uh, mid of the last century and uh, lots of research uh, are going on how can we push really for the magnesiums and its alloys uh, for stent and orthopedic applications. There are, but what is the reason of really uh, gramming magnesium into action in biomedicals? Magnesium has excellent biocompatibility and mechanical properties are quite similar to the natural bone. That is the natural bone range from three to 30 GPA and magnesium has about 45 uh, GBA, which can really control or decrease the stress shielding effects that uh, used to be having in uh, permanent implants such as titanium, stainless steel, and their alloys. So, biodegradability, what is a really more uh, interesting characteristic biodegradability and bioreservability uh, of magnesiums. Magnesiums uh, show with uh, excellent osteogenic properties that the early bone formation and interaction with the surrounding bone and this paper being published in uh, Nature Medicine in early of 2016 and showed how magnesiums can uh, stimulate the gene factors responsible for osteogenic uh, properties. So the main issue that I will uh, share with you about uh, the high corrosion or rapid degradation rate of magnesiums. So magnesiums about the degradation uh, mechanism when it uh, just uh, interacted with the surrounding environment like physiologic environment in a human body, magnesiums in the cathodic reactions convert to magnesium hydroxide and relieve and magnesium hydroxide in excess amount of chloride like in our human body that is more than 150 millimole per liter converted to magnesium chloride. The main issue of magnesium is once released, once they are reacted and converted to magnesium hydroxide, release hydrogen, as we can see in hydrogen gas. Magnesium hydroxide is insoluble, but as I mentioned in chlorine, converts to magnesium chloride that is highly soluble compound and easy to extract it and remove it from a human body. 
سو ان جلفانيك الكتروكيميكال جلفانيك كروجيا مانيجيم از از ذا موست اكتيف اليمنت اند فيري اكتيف ماتيريال ذاتس واي هاز هاي اور رابيد ديجريشن ريت سو وات ار ذا كونسترينتس اوف مانيجيمز هاويفر وي مينشن اول اوف ذيس فيري ابيلينج بروبرتيز اوف مانيجيمز limitations of magnesium the corrosion resistance as we can say the rapid uh, degradation rate that uh, evolve with hydrogen gas so hydrogen gas in the surrounding uh, environment can create like a bubble there and theoretically one gram of magnesium can generate one liter of hydrogen gas this is uh, actually the main challenge however fast degradation rate can be acceptable in in, uh, in different areas in the human uh, body but still the main challenge is hydrogen gas early of 2010 this paper published in nature materials they tried uh, to develop a new alloy of magnesium zinc calcium glasses uh, to how really hydrogen gas evaluation can be reached to zero level they done a good job but however This alloy is quite brittle and it couldn't be moved to clinical applications. Today, I want to really share with you about simple ideas that's been uh, well recognized and highly knowledge in uh, different uh, applications and even start to move forward in Germany and in Korea. They provide a simple coating on magnesium to control its surface, uh, its corrosion, early corrosion, uh, high corrosion rate. So in general, the corrosion or degradation starts from the surface and it's measured by lens per uh, year, depend on how much penetration can happen on the surface. If we can control the degradation rate of the surface, we might able to depress the fast release of hydrogen gas from magnesium surface. So sol gel coating is a simple technique, as we say organic or polymeric, A coating effective, very low cost, non-toxic, biodegradable, and versatile. And also, we can uh, make a drug loading within the within the coating layer. Polyvinyl acetate, uh, acetate. That's uh, first. Uh, I want to share. It has excellent uh, adhesive properties because the, the main limitation of organic uh, coatings is weak uh, uh, adhesion uh, properties. Uh, with a uh, metallic substrate. In this, in this study, we uh, investigated three different solvents, base solvent of uh, BVAC, uh, tetrahydrofluoride, THF, and uh, diamethyl chloride, and also we done DMF. As we can see from electrochemical corrosion analysis here, uh, a high shift towards the, the positive sides indicated the Well control the degradation rate of uh, magnesium, and in uh, for the dichloromethyl shows the highest uh, adhesion uh, strengths in both wet and in dry conditions. This is before removing the corrosion products for 30 days in a simulated body fluid to investigate this, uh, the coating stability. As we can see, after even 30 days, the coating intact and the uh, Uh, showed a good stability here. And what has been, can be seen here, this is a corrosion product during uh, the degradation of magnesium. After the removal of the corrosion product, as we can see here highly, see our severe localized corrosions occurred on magnesium surface compared to uh, coating substrates. Also for, for uh, osteoplast, uh, interaction with magnesium. Magnesium, as I, I shared, is, it has excellent uh, biocompatibility. However, when cells comes to direct interact with magnesium, kill the cell, as we can see here. And the main reason uh, due to the pH, high pH release and increase the pH of the surrounding or localized uh, zones on magnesium surface, and also the abrupt release of uh, magnesium ions. Second, we uh, try to enhance the osteoconductive properties because the polymers uh, know very well it lacks the uh, osteoconductive properties as it's just a, uh, inert uh, polymers. We incorporated hydroxabatite nanoparticles 
into uh, PCL polyepsilon caprolactone medical grade uh, polymer that is FDA approved polymer. And our hypothesis is that once hydroxybutyrite starts to release from the surface, enhance also the conductive properties and formation of, uh, of bone. Not only that, once, magne once hydroxybutyrite release can create like a porous surface as well. And this helps to release hydrogen gas from the surface. Also show it's similar. That is a huge shift effect to, towards the positive side and in, uh, indicated uh, enhances the corrosion uh, uh, resistance or decreasing the corrosion rate. The mechanical properties uh, after uh, immersion for 20 days in a simulated body fluid, it's indicated the coating layer still show the body stability. And here is the formation of the calcium phosphate on the surface and mineralized uh, that has been shown in, in the published paper as well. We investigated XRD and EDS to uh, show what is the composition of uh, the uh, formed layer after immersion in simulated body fluid. Also, after removing the corrosion products, we can see a uniform, uh, a uniform corrosion on the surface compared to very harsh uh, or rapid degradation on the uh, neat cells. But something we, we, we noted really is very important. The solid gel coating using deep coating or uh, spin coating, uh, the, the thin film of polymeric coating has three layers. We can see here, however, we provided a porous uh, structure, but this is superficial, intermediate layer, and the prime layer that is, that is directly contact with, a, with magnesium substrate. Once hydrogen gas evaluated, create like bubbles, and this process the layer from the surface. To avoid that, we developed the urgent spray technique that can do with it a layer by layer on the surface. And in that case, we have a fully porous uh, layer. In this fully porous layer, we can provide hydrogen gas release easily from the surface without uh, entrapping underneath and then create a, a first release of, uh, of hydrogen gas and filling the implant as well. In this study, air jet spray, it's a simple technique. And then when we really we sent to the journals, it gets rejected, uh, rejected after even receiving the comments. However, now it gets more than 150 citations because it showed how really we could tune the degradation rate using air jet spray that is, has fully porous uh, layer. So I want to summarize this, uh, this, this part that's include uh, a, a solid gel coating can tune and uh, uh, control the hydrogen gas evaluation from uh, magnesium surface. Also, the different solvent creates different surface topography and also uh, different cells uh, function on magnesium surface. Incorporating hydroxabotide into PLA or PCL, both of them are FDA board materials enhanced to also conductive and early pool formation of the on the medium surface. Natural bone, as all of us are aware about, it uh, has the, the, the structure, it critical bone or cancellous, uh, cancellous bone, and critical bone uh, contribute 80% uh, of uh, human natural bone. But really, human natural bone matrix are, are very complicated. As we can see here, in macrostructure level, and when we reach to sub-microstructure in a collagen uh, fibril, a, a very, very alignment of mineralized uh, abatite-like, or we say abatite-like hydroxabatite, calcium phosphate, on each single uh, fibril uh, structure. Here is just a schematic shows how the collagen fibril and abatite-like in a plate-like structure arranged in the surface that the inorganic materials uh, are responsible for uh, providing uh, a high load uh, bearing uh, uh, properties for, ma for natural bones. Trials on incorporating inorganic uh, materials onto the single, uh, each single electrospan fiber, but as we can see, there's lots of agglomeration on the surface that, that can create a plus release of uh, hydroxabatite from the surface and also weakness 
of the scaffold regarding its mechanical properties. Another way of how we can enhance the biomineralization of the scaffold by, by immersing uh, the scaffold in simulated body fluid at different time points can start from 10 days up to uh, 28 days, depending on what type of polymer, the concentration of the simulated body fluid. And here we can see the surface uh, was fully encapsulated by mineralized uh, layer. However, we should consider that it's a time consuming and this uh, during immersion in simulated body fluid can change the, the scaffold properties like uh, accelerating the degradation before implantation and also uh, poor mechanical properties. Our strategy is very simple. We try to mimic the structure of the extrasolar matrix of natural bone. Here is uh, electrospond fibers and immerse it in a colloidal solution of hydroxamatite. Then we applied autoclave at 100, from 130 to 180 degrees Celsius to try to fully cover the surface of each single electrospond uh, nanofiber by hydroxamatite. This uh, SEM image shows uh, the, 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 the topography of electrospan fiber, it looks like yeah, similar to extrasolar matrix, and TMM imaging uh, indicates the surface uh, smoothness and doesn't have any uh, rough properties. But after hydrothermal treatment and uh, coating the scaffold with hydroxabatite, you can see in one, in, start from 30 minutes up to one hour, or, uh, up to three hours that we done a proper study on that. You can see the surface, each single electrospan fiber after hydrothermal treatment being covered, fully covered with a nanoplate-like structure that we can see here after we dissolved the electro, uh, electrospan mat and we collected the, the mineralized uh, layer from the surface. We can see hydroxabatite nanoplates being formed in a very, uh, a regular fashion in each single electrospan fiber. XRD also confirms the deposition and formation of uh, hydroxabatite onto the surface. TGO also indicates the, uh, how much uh, concentrations start from 10, 10.5%, we reached, we could reach 26% contribution of inorganics, uh, hydroxabatite minerals on the surface of electrospan mass enhances also the mechanical properties, as we can see, increase the elastic, elastic models properties and ultimate tensile strength. However, it decreases the elongation, but still the scaffold handy and uh, can be uh, handled very easily and also enhances the surface suitability, as we can see. Cell culture has the uh, host plus properties because a uh, matter of time, we, we done uh, ex gene expressions we done also conductive properties as well, ALB activities, and showed uh, definitely there is hydroxabatite on the surface, enhances the biomineralization. Using the same techniques, because most of the study tried to use uh, bioactive glass ceramics but the, as a soil gel, but once bioactive glass ceramic capsulated within the scaffold or within the, the, the polymeric scaffold, it's isolated from the surrounding environment and it can allows its function like uh, accelerating the early bone formation. Using this technique, we use as received bioactive glass ceramics particles and using the, the electrospan scaffold, that's different substrate actually, as I will share in a, in a minute, and using the same hydrocellular technique, dissociated the particles uh, in, the, in the solution and during the hydrocellular reaction, the particles assembling on the surface of uh, polyamide six substrates. Here we can see this is AB shows the casted uh, fill and C and D as you can see here after the uh, precipitation of bioactive glass ceramics to the surface. We also tested this high versus using uh, 3D printer and electrospan fiber. Then we characterize the, the surface to prove the precipitation and the formation of bioactive glass on the surface. We also done visibility, viability, cells viability, osteoblaster cells on the surface and showed how bioactive glass on the surface accelerate 
the, the early bone formation and as well after the precipitation of bioactive glass run up on the surface, we tested the mineralization functions uh, up for, I believe for five and yeah, for five and 10 days. As we can see, hydrox, uh, bioactive glass once uh, start to release calcium phosphate, accelerates the early bone formation that we can see here, accelerates the calcium phosphate compared to neat uh, electrospun uh, scaffold. Not only that, we use this technique, poly PLA, polylactic acid, FDA approval materials, widely used as stent in stent application drug or implantations. But the main limitations of, uh, of PLA, it has hydrophobic properties and low mechanical properties because it's brittle materials. But using this one, we use polyvinyl uh, alcohol. It's FDA approved material as well. A solution and we immerse in the electrospun scaffold in that and we heat it uh, up to from 120 to 140 degrees Celsius. As we can see, the electrospun surface, fiber surface, fully encapsulated by polyvinyl alcohol and it changes the surface uh, hydrophobicity to be hydrophilic, to hydrophilic materials uh, and enhances the mechanical properties uh, significantly. So hydrothermal treatment is a robust technique, very easy, simple, and cost-effective. We could enhance the surface characteristics of, uh, of uh, 3D uh, uh, printed or to spun, and even we tested the biofilm of the formation of inorganic uh, nano uh, material on the surface. As well, we could tune the uh, mechanical properties and the weightability of uh, PLA scaffold. Just, uh, however, this is very simple technique, but we managed to publish in, in well uh, noisy journals. This really, I need really your expertise, and I wanna share with you, this is some novel studies uh, we developed recently in our group, micro holes on titanium dental abutment using femtosecond laser micro machining, using subtracting modification process, because most of, if we making additive manufacturing on titanium abutment, once implanted and using the screws, easy to detach it. But in that, in that case, we use subtraction. We try to create holes or tubeless on the surface of titanium abutment. Let's say I give just a, a quick background. What is the current challenge on this study? So here once uh, 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 failures due to uh, biofilm formations or so we, we, we move to, we have to have implanted for, uh, uh, for, for the defects that's uh, been removed some mutations there. So here we, the implants, once the implant, uh, implant success for the point issue, there is no issue about 97% success rate of uh, uh, bone tissue integration with the, with the surrounding uh, of the implant with the surrounding uh, tissue. But the issue here in the abutment section, once it starts uh, the uh, black hue or biofilm formations causes the, the failure of the implants. So here, if we can see the collagen fiber, collagen fibrile attachment is perpendicular to the natural teeth. But then when we have implants, it becomes like a superficial and the attachment is very weak. So we need to seal this area because if it's not sealed, there's lots of black you and biofilm formations happens and causes inflammation, then failure of the implants. What we, we really suggest, if we can develop like a, a holes or a, a tubes on the abutment section, this one in this section. And in that case, we will force the soft tissue insertion to be particular as well. And in that case, we can avoid the penetration of black use or biofilm formation of bacteria grows in this area. Here micro, we, we use fifth to second laser micro machining, as uh, we can see here the, the using additive uh, CAD CAM uh, technology. We created, a, uh, the, we designed the, the, the structures that we are looking for. Here is we work on two different pore size, seven and 14 micrometer. You can imagine each single hole here, it's about seven 
and the 15 micrometer using femtosecond laser micro machining. And it can be seen here from the uh, SCM surface morphology. All the surface looks like similar in a very fashion uh, uh, organization and uh, fabrication of superficial uh, uh, micro microtubules or titanium abutment. Then we tested that using uh, uh, fibroblast cells, as we can see here. The surface, you, you probably you can see that the holes here, the tubeless, the surface fully covered. And we, I will share with you in a, in a minute how the cells in, in penetrated and infiltrated within these holes. Here is the CM, share with the surface fully covered, and we try to, to find out areas that's not fully covered from cells to see inside how is the, the cells matrix uh, goes through the, these uh, tiny holes. You can see here multi layers of cells being formed uh, through this one. So, what we expect, in, if we do implantation in, uh, for that one, so that the cells infiltration or the soft tissue infiltration can help conceal the apartment from uh, failure. We done a cross section, however, it was very challenge to take cross section of seven micron, and we done a resin inbid to, to show the cells infiltration within the section one. Currently, what we are uh, facing actually, and I need your feedback, Professor, about how we done in vivo. And uh, now the challenge is that how we can uh, investigate and how we can quantify the infiltration of the soft tissue through these holes. However, we we, we done a try before, as I shared in the same image, using in vitro uh, study, but it's still a challenge to take many, many sections just to, to see uh, the cells. Not only that, we still uh, doubt this is, can be a matrix or it can be a resin embed as well within these tiny holes. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, University of Queensland for supporting our research as well and a couple of research funding from HABS, our uh, health uh, faculty at UQ, and the Dennis, uh, School of Dentistry and uh, Research Center course three. I want to thank all of people working together, uh, my students, uh, visitors, uh, and undergraduate and research assistant. Uh, thank you very much. and. Uh, happy to receive any questions from you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you, too, for your presentation. That must be exciting for the biomedical community. Now your talk is opened for discussions, maybe comments. We have a couple of minutes. Does anybody have questions? Or? I don't see any in the chat. Okay, if no questions, then let's move to the second talk. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you.